Phoenix police finally caught up to a man suspected of shooting two people. No, it was a real gun, man. It was just a revolver. If they shot you in the eye with a revolver, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. This story is so bizarre that at the end of the video, you will be shaking your head thinking how in the world could they have missed that? Ryan, look at me. Yes. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Why did you shoot Heather, Ryan? Christmas Day 2006 started as a sunny day in the Phoenix area. Ryan Waller and his girlfriend Heather Kwan were preparing to spend the holiday with Ryan's family. Ryan and Heather were students who had barely started their young lives. Heather's ambition to help others was admirable from a young age, and the 21-year-old student was aspiring to go to law school to become a defense attorney. In her time off, she volunteered to spend time with underprivileged children. Ryan was also a student, but the series of events that unfolded that sunny Christmas day would cut his education short and change his life forever. As soon as police arrived at Heather and Ryan's home on Christmas night, the investigation went in a direction it never should have gone. When looking through the window, the police spotted Heather's lifeless body on the couch, but they refused to enter the home until a search warrant was received. Once it was confirmed Heather was dead, Ryan was immediately arrested on suspicion of murder. Ryan was not only extremely injured but also disoriented. He was confused by the chaos of the ensuing police investigation and placed in the back of a police car for four hours. Ryan had blood and bulbous black and red bruises on his face, but he wouldn't receive any kind of medical attention until hours later. At the time of Ryan's arrest, police had assumed that the incident was a violent domestic dispute turned deadly. The police couldn't construct a proper timeline of events due to Ryan's disoriented responses. So instead of conducting a thorough investigation of the evening, Ryan was taken to the police station to be interrogated despite his condition. Ryan Waller's interrogation began at 5 a.m. on the morning of December 26th. The duration of his interrogation was videotaped, and from the very beginning, a distraught Waller is seen with no shoes or socks while wearing a white jumpsuit. He isn't handcuffed, but he notices a handcuff attached to the table he's sitting at. After putting it on, he sits a few more moments while groaning in pain. Mm. Waller then tries to get up to leave, but he realizes he's attached to the table via handcuff, almost as if he's forgotten he put it on. A few moments later, lead detective Paul Dalton enters the interrogation room. Dalton explains the other detective is going to need to take pictures of Ryan's feet and swab them for evidence. Ryan complies, but it's clear he's becoming increasingly agitated with the circumstances. No, nope, I need your left. Mm, hold on. <sighs> he mumbles that he wants to go home and he's distraught when he's told he cannot go. All right, do I get to go home? Home? Should go to the doctor. Should go. Me? Yeah. Why? That? Yeah. Is it bad? I'd say that's really bad. At this point, Dalton should have examined Ryan's injuries further and realized there was something severely wrong since Ryan didn't seem to fully understand the events which led to the interrogation. After about 10 minutes, the other detective finishes collecting evidence from Ryan's feet and exits the interrogation room. What follows is a confusing exchange between Ryan and Detective Dalton. Dalton gets Ryan to supply some basic information to confirm his identity, like full name, birth date, and social security number. Your date of birth is 2 12 1988. Your social security is 600 62 5451. Yes? Yes. Okay. Dalton then explains to Ryan that he needs to read him his rights. In an attempt to be more friendly with Ryan, Dalton refers to the rights as those that are on true crime TV shows. I don't know what happened, okay? So I'm going to read you something to make sure you understand your rights, okay? Basically, I'm going to read you. You've seen cops before, right? Ever seen a TV show cops or CSI or anything like that? Okay. 
You ever seen that? No. You've never seen any kind of cop show? Lawyer show? Any kind of show? Yeah. Okay. Ryan becomes defensive with this example, but he's still providing unclear answers to Detective Dalton, who now assumes Ryan is lying about not knowing what Miranda rights are. I want you to listen up real close. Okay, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and be with you during questioning if you so desire. Now, for an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to question. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Yes? Okay. For the next few minutes, Dalton asks questions about Ryan's education, but Ryan continues to give confusing answers. What's the um, highest grade you went through school? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know the highest grade you went through? Eighth? Did you, eighth grade? Did you graduate? Yeah. It is not clear if he has a GED or what was the highest grade he received during school. Did you, do you have a GED? I don't know. You don't uh, know what? I don't know. I don't know. With the confusing responses, Dalton is convinced Ryan is lying. And every time Ryan mentions he wants to go home, Dalton tells him he can't. I just want to go home. Well, you're, you're not going to go home right now. Dalton then moves on to asking about Heather. You know, you know a girl named Heather? Mm-hmm. Do you know Heather's last name? Mm-hmm. What is Heather's last name? Um, the one that lives there right now? I guess, I don't know. If her name's Heather, what's her last name? Um, Ryan initially says he doesn't know Heather, and when asked about her age, Ryan says he believes she's 16 or 17. When asked for her last name, Ryan gives a different last name than Quan. How old is Heather? 16 or 17. Is she a white girl? Yeah. She probably wants the last name, Kaiman. Kaiman? In order to get tougher on Ryan, Dalton turns his focus on Ryan's injuries. Let me see your nose. Put your, put, your legs, put your legs down. Put your legs down. Bring, bring your face closer. Oh, my head hurts. Okay. Yeah, be, be right back. Dalton was not the only detective who believed that Ryan received his injuries from Heather defending herself during the assumed domestic dispute. In a heated and frustrated exchange, Dalton finally tells Ryan there's a dead girl in his living room. There's a dead girl in your living room. She's dead? Yes. Heather? I don't know. I want to know what happened in your house last night. But Ryan turns from confused to genuinely surprised, as if he's really hearing this information for the first time. The girl on the couch is dead? I don't know. If she's on the couch, she's dead. With Detective Dalton switching his interrogation tactics to bad cop, he asks Ryan if he shot her. Did you shoot Heather? Mm-mm. -mm. I heard you have a lot of guns in your house. Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. You know we're going to look. Mm -hmm. Ryan responds with a rambling series of new information that doesn't quite make sense. Ryan, why don't you tell me what really happened there? Because I don't believe... I really don't know, man. I really don't. I don't know. I can tell you anything, I swear. Well, I want you to tell me the truth. That's all I want. Richie and his dad came there. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But it isn't until he mentions other people being in the house, shooting at both Heather and Ryan, that Detective Dalton starts to understand Ryan isn't a suspect. He was a victim with two bullet holes in his face. And he survived the attack. Acting, you're not going to believe this one. I can't believe it either. You're right. I've already heard the story. I can't believe it. Uh, this is just my observations that this might be an entrance, this might be an exit, and this might be into his eye. And he's acting... Uh, like he has a serious head injury, which would make sense. What if so it happened, what, the other night? I don't know. You don't know what happened. 
Were there guns around? This kid Eric did it. I don't know how he did it exactly. I might have been shot. I don't know. I really don't know. On December 23rd, two days before the police arrived for the wellness check on Ryan and Heather, Larry and Richie Carver had broken into Ryan and Heather's home to commit armed robbery. During Ryan's ramblings to Detective Carver, Ryan mentioned Richie and his dad had broken in. Well, these people came over, Richie and his dad, with shooting arrow, bow and darts. Based on this information, police tracked down Richie Carver and his father, Larry. Finally, the real culprits were in custody. Prior to the robbery and murder, 23-year-old Richie Carver lived with Ryan and Heather. But when Richie made unwanted advances towards Heather, Ryan asked him to leave after a scuffle. Richie then contacted his father, 54-year-old Larry, about getting revenge. On the night of December 23rd, Larry and Richie attempted to break in through the back door. When Ryan saw what was happening, he tried to stop them, although the two had already made their way inside. Ryan was shot at point-blank range to the face with two bullets which left four holes in his face. They stepped over Ryan's body and went to the couch to shoot Heather once in the head. Since Ryan was suffering from reprehensible brain damage from the shooting, it's thought that he woke up disoriented, saw Heather lying on the couch, and assumed she was asleep. A full two days passed until Ryan had contact with anyone about the shooting, and when he did, they assumed he was guilty. Phoenix police finally caught up to a man suspected of shooting two people in their valley home. Richie Lee Carver has been arrested and accused of shooting Heather Kwan and Ryan Waller in the head in late December of last year. Today, a judge set Carver's bond at a million dollars. Police conducting a welfare call found the body of 21-year-old Heather Kwan on a couch in the home near 27th Avenue in Glendale with a bullet in her head. The other victim, 18-year-old Ryan Waller, was also shot in the face, but still conscious when police arrived. Waller was taken into custody for questioning and told police that Carver had shot both of them. After hours of questioning, Waller was taken to the hospital where a surgeon had to remove both of his eyes because of the gunshot wound he sustained. However, during the trial of Richie Carver, multiple people testified about their whereabouts on December 23rd, including Ryan's roommate, Alicia. Officials believe detectives took advantage of Ryan's confusion and used the two-day gap to cover their negligence of investigating the case. A medical expert also stated that the injuries Ryan sustained were fresh from the day of December 25th and were unlikely caused two days later. Richie and Larry Carver are now serving life sentences without the possibility of parole. But unfortunately, Ryan faced multiple complications. Following the shooting, Ryan spent 35 days in the hospital, undergoing multiple surgeries to remove the bullet fragments from his eyes and skull. He also had a broken jaw from being tackled by the police during the arrest. I'm sick. I'm just devastated. My son is in there, he has to go through surgery. He has bone fragments and bullet fragments in his brain, bleeding in the brain, and I don't know if I'll ever see my son walk out of there again. Ryan lost his left eye due to the shooting and would experience severe seizures for the rest of his life. The brain damage he suffered was unimaginable, sometimes only being able to repeat the same sentence or phrase over and over. Don Waller, Ryan's father, commented that sometimes it was like speaking to an Alzheimer's patient. Multiple medical experts have voiced their opinions that if Ryan had received proper medical intervention in a timely manner, his injuries may not have been as severe. The Waller family had attempted to sue the Phoenix Police Department for $15 million, but the case was dismissed. The police department also faced additional scrutiny for their negligence of the investigation, and had they not assumed Ryan was the suspect, a proper investigation could have been carried out. Ryan survived another six years, but succumbed to a fatal seizure in a grocery store. He was 27 years old.